Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series. So specifically we're talking about common formulas for sequences. So let's go ahead and dive into it. First we have even numbers. So how do we write out even numbers? Well, let's go ahead and think about it. We have 2, 4, 6, 8. This is going to be written as 2 times 1. Now 4 is going to be 2 times 2, 6 is going to be 2 times 3, 8 is going to be 2 times 4. So notice the number that's changing each time, 1, 2, 3, 4. So a common way to write out even numbers is going to be 2 times n. So if you wanted to give an explicit formula, you could have a sub n is equal to 2n. And that's going to give you the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, all the way down, right? That's going to be all the even numbers. Now for odd numbers is we take our even numbers and we add 1 each time. So we get 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, 5, 7, 9. And like I said, this is equal to 2 times 1 plus 1. This is going to be 4 plus 1, which is 2 times 2 plus 1. This is going to be 6 plus 1, 2 times 3 plus 1. This is going to be 8 plus 1. That's going to be 2 times 4 plus 1. So now, again, notice the number that's changing each time. That's going to be our n. And so we can represent odd numbers with 2n plus 1. So if I wrote out the sequence a sub n equals 2n plus 1, that's going to give me the sequence of all uh, odd numbers, 1, 3, 4. 5, 7, so on and so forth. And that's going to depend on where we start with n. If we start with n equals 0 going all the way down, then that's how I'm going to get that 1 in there, right? So what if we had oscillating numbers? So let's go ahead and take an example of like positive 2, negative 4, positive 6, negative 8, positive 10, negative 12, so on and so forth. I just chose even numbers because why not? How do we represent that? Well, think about it. If we have negative 1 raised to something, so let's go ahead and say n, if n is even, right, if it's an even number, we have that this is positive, right? And take a look at all our positive numbers, 2, 6, 10, so on and so forth. Now, when n is odd, this is going to be negative, right? And this is where we get all of our negative numbers, right, when n is odd. So let's think about it in terms of our sequence. If I rewrote this as negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n, we're going to let n equal 1, 2, 3, all the way down. So if I were to plug in 1, the thing is, is that we would get negative 2. And our starting value is positive 2. So one way that we can change that is if we change the exponent. What if I did n plus 1? Well, now if I plug in 1, I get 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So we get negative 1 squared, and we end up with a positive thing. So that's exactly how we can change that formula to do what we want. So very common ways that people write it is normal negative 1 to the n, or negative 1 to the n plus 1, negative 1 to the n minus 1, anything your heart desires, those are all going to give you the result you want. You just have to make sure that you adjust it correctly to be with your sequence. So let's go ahead and try out some examples here. First, we have a sub n, which is equal to 1, negative 2, 3, negative 4, so on and so forth. We're going to find the next two terms of the sequence. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm going to write it out. The first thing I notice is that this is counting numbers. So I'm going to have 6 and I'm going to have 7. But I also know it's alternating in terms of positive and negative, so that's going to be a negative 6. And those are our next two terms. Let's go on to write out a recurrence relation now. So first, we need to write our first term, a sub 1 is equal to 1. So then a sub n plus 1 is going to be equal to, the first thing we have is that is alternating between positive and negative. So it's going to be raised to the power of n. And then we also have that it's increasing in magnitude by 1 each time. So we're going to take our previous term and we're going to add 1. So here, let's go ahead and make sure that we have actual correct numbers. So first, if we set n equal to 1, we get our second term, a2, is equal to, that's going to be negative 1 to the first, and that's going to be a sub 1, which is 1 plus 1. So here we get negative 2. And so we know that we have the correct relation. Finally, we're going to go ahead and write out an explicit formula for this one. Remember, for explicit formulas, we're going to have for n is equal to, and we can do 1, 2, 3, 4. And that right there describes our counting number. So we have a to the n is equal to n. So that's our counting number. It increases by 1 each time. But now we need to have the alternating positive and negative. So we're going to have negative 1 raised to some power. First, let's start off with n. If we set n equal to 1, then what we're going to get is negative 1. And that is not our first term. Our first term is positive 1. So we need to adjust this so it adjusts correctly to our sequence. So if I raise it to n plus 1, I'm going to plug in 1, and I get 2. When it's raised to an even power, it's going to be positive. And so that's how we get our positive 1. Let's go ahead and try our second one. We have b sub n is equal to 2, 12, 30, 54. So first, we're going to find the next two terms of the sequence. So let's go ahead and try to find a pattern. 
Let's go ahead and think about these as products. So first we have two is gonna be one times two. 12 is gonna be equal to three times four. 30 is gonna be equal to five times six. 54 is gonna be equal to seven times eight, so on and so forth. So notice here that the pattern, we have that the odd numbers are increasing each time and we also have that the even numbers are increasing each time. So let's go ahead and try to find our next multiples. So for us, we're gonna go ahead and get nine times 10, which is equal to 90. And then we're going to get 11 times 12, which is 121. So if you wanted to rewrite that as a sequence, you totally could. So 2, 12, 30, 54, and then we get 90 and 121. Now we want to go ahead and write out an explicit formula for this. So I see the relationship between positive and negative numbers. So we have a sub n is going to be equal to, first we have the odd number 2n plus 1. And then we're going to multiply that by the even number 2n. And now we need to see if this is actually going to fit. Let's go ahead and start off for n is equal to, and we can just do, and you can start with 0, you can start with 1, whatever your heart desires. If we were to start with 0, we need to make sure that this works. So let's see, a sub 0, which would be our first term, which is equal to 2. That's going to be 2 times 0 plus 1 times 2 times 0, which is just going to be equal to 0. So that means we need to go ahead and adjust that second term. So instead of just 2n, let's do 2n plus 2. So now if we were to plug in 0, n is equal to 0, we're going to get 1 times 2. If we plug in n equals 1, we're going to go ahead and get 3 times 4. And so I adjusted it so it correctly fits our sequence. Let's go ahead and try one more. We have 1 half, negative 3 fourths, 5 6, negative 7 8, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and find the next two terms of the sequence. So here... We got a nice relationship going on. We have the odd number in the numerator and the even number in the denominator, and it's increasing each time. It's also alternating. So our next one is going to be negative 11 divided by 12. So there we got our next two terms. Let's go ahead and try to write out the explicit formula for this. So a sub n is going to be, let's start off with negative 1 to the n. We have our odd number 2n plus 1 divided by our even number 2n. Let's go ahead and start off at n equals 1 this time just for fun. Let's go ahead and make sure this works. So first we'll start with a negative. Negative one to the first is gonna be negative, but our first term is positive. So I need to change this and I'm gonna do that by making it n plus one. Now if we plug in one, we're gonna get negative one squared, which is positive one. So our positive and negative is good to go. Let's talk about our actual fraction. If we were to plug in n equals one, we'd get two plus one, which is equal to three. But notice we're starting off with one half. So I want this to actually equal one. So I can do that by adjusting it and making it minus 1 instead. In the denominator, if we plugged in 1, we get 2 times 1, which is equal to 2, which is perfect for our first term. If you want to check out the next terms, like you could try n equals 2. So here we get a2 is going to be negative 1 to the power of 3 times 2 times 2 minus 1 divided by 2 times 2. That's going to give us a negative 3 fourths, which is indeed our second term. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.